So I'm Kyle, I sell groceries for a living. I say it that way because we all know it's different. You work for co-ops, you sell groceries, but there's a whole layer of things that come along with that, social issues and expectations that get layered on top of that that make it much more complicated than just selling groceries. So my story today is one of our failures. <clears throat> Back about three years ago, our prepared foods department um, had some issues, and I'm gonna go through that. So Burlington is a participant in a national program, a federal program for refugee resettlement. And keep in mind, this is gonna start touching sore spots. So we had um, a few people in our prepared foods department that were English as a second language only, and they were having trouble with each other. So what we had to do was find out what the issues were. We hire translators, we speak with them, and. Uh, it turned out that there were, they, they were hitting some of those race, religion, um, sex kind of things that you don't want people to touch in your departments. You don't want those conversations to happen. There were complaints from within the group, and we needed to tamp it down. So our prepared foods department, our managers had said some things that were a little bit, they were encouraging them to speak English only while they're working. And this is something that we own up to, and it's a, how do you, how do you deal with it? You've got a personnel problem on one side, and you've got, an, a, that you need to control, and then you have um, the inability to get to the access to the problem. So they were, they were saying things like, you should you know, sp speak English to, to their employees, and um, in a meeting when we were trying to get things back to a, how do I put it, a civil tone in the department. Um, one manager said the completely wrong thing, and essentially that English was required while you work. And there's a big difference between required and encouraged. Encouraged is, English is your, your gateway as a refugee. If you can speak the language and you can communicate with customers, you get better jobs. You can you can advance, so it's, it's something that the African Association of, or American, uh, the Association of Africans Living in Vermont, who is one of our sponsors for this program of bringing refugees in, had encouraged us to encourage them to use English. So we were within bounds of what they wanted, and regardless, the wrong thing was said. And the union, we're unionized, jumped on it and I mean jumped on it. <laughs> they grieved it immediately, saying that we shouldn't have an English-only policy and that we needed to rescind it immediately. Keep in mind, we don't have an English-only policy. We have an encourage people to speak English, but we don't have a written policy that says you will do this or else. And that result, um, they took to social media, to newspapers, and um, handed out flyers. Things got out of control accusations of racism, of violating civil liberties, um, the whole gamut. And as a, a leader in the co-op, it was really hard not to take some of these accusations personally because we weren't trying to cause a problem. Our intent was good, create a, a well-heeled, grounded, safe environment for our employees to work in. We, our intentions were good with bringing in refugees. We wanted to help that community out. We needed to ref, reflect in our um, employee base, the community as a whole. So this was a great way to get us out there, to be part of it. And those intentions and all the good intentions in the world go for naught when you do just one little wrong thing. So, <clears throat> yeah, we, we had a hard time individually accepting it since, well, we went out of our way. We had our compost bin labeled in Swahili. No kidding. So you're in our cafe, it's labeled in Swahili, Kagrili, I'm not sure about that. We've, we've got all these different languages. We had seven or eight at that time, including French, Spanish, Portuguese, Swahili, um, English, Farsi, Vietnamese, 
a lot. <laughs> and you could run into this. It was, it was awesome. You'd go down the hallway and you'd go from conversation. You'd hear this stuff. It was, it was amazing. Still happens. It's, it's still that way. So where, where do we do about it? We're in a, we're in a pickle. Um, we needed some leadership to get out of that. And Pat Burns, our manager at the, our GM at the time, did a few things that I thought were exactly right. First off, we were very proactive. We met with community leaders immediately. We went out and found and listened to what they had to say, presented our side, but mostly listened. We owned up to the incorrect statements that caused the kaboom, and we partnered with our, our greater community to come up with a plan forward. So we didn't just do it on our own and say, this is, you know, we're going to do this. We, we came up with a plan that, it, that was formulated in part by the groups of people that were sponsoring uh, the refugees. So the, the, the courage, courage there was admitting to the mistake publicly. It was being humble, owning up to things and, and being out there. And it was a lot of listening. And it was careful communication. And I think we're, we're much better for it now. We've had some, some programs in place that have really um, made a better community out of the, the workforce at the co-op. So there you have it. <laughs>